What's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you just how easy it can be to overclock Intel's new Core i9 9900K to an all core frequency of 5.1 gigahertz. And I'm not talking about some crazy high-end overclock where if you're lucky, you might get to run for a few seconds before your whole system melts down into a pool of molten goo. No, I'm talking about a completely stable overclock for everyday use that doesn't require any form of exotic cooling or even the highest end all-in-one liquid cooler for that matter. Let's get started. Before attempting any type of overclocking, I always like to make sure I'm running the absolute latest version of my system BIOS. To do that, you can just head over to your motherboard manufacturer's website and just check if there are any newer BIOS versions than what you currently have. Next, just a quick note on motherboards and chipsets. I recommend purchasing a higher end board with good quality voltage regulation modules or VRMs as they're often referred to. The 9900K can be a power hungry beast and you're going to want to make sure you have the absolute best voltage regulation and power delivery system that you can possibly afford within your system budget. Low cost or budget motherboards with poor VRM quality are not likely going to cut it here, at least not for high end overclocking. So when purchasing a motherboard for a 9900K or pretty much any ninth generation CPU that you plan to overclock, do your research and make sure you're getting one with good quality VRMs. I also recommend going to the Z390 platform if you can in order to take advantage of the motherboards that have been specifically designed from the ground up to support these new Intel 9th generation CPUs. Next, we're gonna talk about cooling for a second, and I really can't stress this enough. You need to make sure you have a good performing CPU cooler if you plan to get anywhere in terms of overclocking with a 9900K. Your Hyper 212 Evo is just not gonna save you here. In this video, I'm gonna be using a Corsair H100i version two, which is a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. I recommend this cooler, and of course, anything equivalent, as the minimum level of cooling if you plan to really push your 9900K. Once we get our overclock all up and running, we're gonna take a closer look at thermals. So make sure you stay tuned for that part of the video. All right, to get this overclock started, we need to get into the system BIOS. To do that, restart your system and keep pressing the delete key as the computer restarts. And here we are. This is the Asus UEFI BIOS utility in advanced mode on my Z390 ROG Strix motherboard. I'm gonna be doing pretty much all of my overclocking in the AI tweaker tab. The first thing that I'm going to do is just make sure that my memory is running at its rated frequency and timings by enabling the XMP profile. Make sure you don't forget this step, otherwise your memory may not perform as intended. Next, I'm going to go down to the CPU core ratio. Inside here, there are a few different options. I want to select sync all cores because I want to be able to set a manual value for my frequency multiplier, and I want that to be applied equally across all eight cores on this CPU. As soon as you select this option, the core ratio limits show up. Right here, this is where you will enter the CPU clock multiplier for your overclock. I'm targeting a frequency of 5.1 gigahertz, so I will set this to a value of 51. And you can see this value has been applied to all eight cores. Next, I'm gonna head over to the Digi Plus VRM tab and configure the load line calibration for my overclock. Load line calibration is used to reduce the amount of V-core fluctuation under load when you're overclocking. My motherboard by default has set this to level two, but there are much higher values to choose from all the way up to level seven. For my overclock, I'm gonna set this to level six because I really don't wanna be dealing with voltage fluctuations while I'm trying to achieve stability. And now for the dangerous part, or the fun part, depending on how you look at it and whether or not you like to live dangerously. The CPU core voltage control. For this overclock, I have decided to use adaptive voltage mode because I want my V-Core to be able to scale up and down with the processor load. This way, when the processor isn't doing much, the V-Core can drop itself down along with the frequency. So I'm simply going to enable adaptive mode and enter my value in the box below. For this overclock, I'm going to use a value of 1.32 volts. Okay, so we have all of our main settings for our overclock dialed in. The only other thing that I wanna mention is that if you plan to run any applications that use AVX instruction sets, which are super demanding on the CPU, there's one more thing you can do to reduce the load on the CPU under those tasks. This is referred to as AVX offset, and what this does is reduces the CPU frequency when using AVX instruction sets. 
The way this works is actually really simple. Whatever you enter in here as your value of your AVX offset just reduces the CPU frequency multiplier by that amount. So for example, if you were to have a frequency multiplier of 45 and then set an AVX offset of five, it will reduce the multiplier down to 40 when AVX loads are encountered. Personally, I'm just gonna leave this setting alone because I don't plan to do anything that requires AVX processing. And that's it. I'm just gonna save this profile, then hit F10 to save my changes and boot into Windows. And here it is, an eight core 16 thread CPU running at an all core frequency of a ridiculous 5.1 gigahertz. Once you reach this stage, you're gonna wanna run some stress tests and just do some everyday computing, play some games, render some video, whatever you do with your computer, just to see if it's stable. And then go ahead and make any necessary adjustments to achieve stability and also get yourself within a temperature envelope that you're comfortable with. And remember, every CPU and motherboard can perform a little bit differently. So at this stage, if you don't have stability at 5.1 gigahertz, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've done anything wrong or that you got a bad CPU. It just means that your CPU might have different overclocking limits and voltage requirements compared to mine. So what does all this effort actually get us in terms of performance? Check this out. So what do you think? Is overclocking the 9900K worth the effort? I want to know what you think down here in the comments section of this video. Before we end this video, I just want to have a quick word on thermals. Depending on your comfort level with CPU temperatures, you can be just fine with a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler or even a really high-end air cooler for that matter, in my opinion, such as one of those massive ones from Noctua if you're into that sort of thing. But if you're somebody that likes to see lower temperatures than what I've been able to produce here, that's actually not such a bad thing because there are a lot of options available to you. There are 280 and 360 millimeter AIOs and of course, there's always custom water cooling loops. But all in all, I think these temperatures are pretty good. Is it time to upgrade your system? Perhaps a higher end cooler for that shiny new 9900K that you plan to overclock? If so, make sure you check out the purchasing links right down here in the description of this video. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to leave a thumbs up on your way out and check back for more content really soon. See ya.